The movie opens in LaGrange, Ohio, where we are introduced to our protagonist, Curtis LaForge. He is currently having an apocalyptic dream, where he sees a rainstorm made of motor oil. Just then, he wakes up and finds that it's a sunny day. Curtis lives with his wife, Samantha, and their deaf daughter, Hannah. Samantha is a housewife who spends most of her time taking care of her daughter. The family's income comes from Curtis, who works for a construction company. One day, he is working at a construction site when it starts to rain, causing his job to fall short. As a result, he visits a bar with his colleagues and enjoys some beer. Meanwhile, at home, Samantha and Hannah look at the rainstorm outside and learn how to spell some words in sign language. Later, Curtis goes to drop his co-worker, DeWart, at home. While in the car, they talk about their lives, and DeWart believes that Curtis is having a wonderful life. However, the latter reveals that things are not as pretty as they always seem. Upon arriving home, Curtis checks on his mute daughter when his wife suddenly hugs him from behind. She tells him that Hannah is still unable to connect with other children. Children. However, he asks her not to worry, asserting that everything will be okay over time. The next day, as Curtis is cleaning up some trash, a heavy storm appears in the sky. Soon after, a lightning bolt strikes the ground, which disturbs his dog, Red. It breaks free from its chain and charges towards Curtis, biting his right arm. At that moment, he wakes up in bed, revealing it to be another bad dream. Curtis doesn't like storms. Later, during breakfast, he gets worried for his daughter, who is playing with Red. So he takes her away from it. When Samantha tries to intervene, he lashes out at her and leaves without having his breakfast. Even at work, Curtis seems to be distracted as he keeps looking at his right arm. While working at the construction site, he sees a swarm of black birds in the sky. He asks his coworker about it, but the latter doesn't notice anything. That afternoon, Curtis and his wife attend their daughter's school meeting, where they are briefed about some sign language which they can use with their children. Later that night, Curtis experiences another bad dream. This time, he and his daughter get into a car accident due to yeah, heavy rainfall. He wakes up from a daze and sees a couple of men outside trying to break into their car. Soon after, one of them takes his daughter away while the other strangles him from behind. Curtis suddenly snaps out of the dream in a cold sweat, gasping for air. These recurring dreams make him very anxious and depressed, which is visible on his face. Samantha also notices this and asks if he's sick, but he assures her that he is fine. Following Following this, his wife and daughter leave the house to attend a school fair while he stays home. Since it is his day off, he proceeds to construct a fence in their backyard so that he can secure his dog there. Once he is done, he looks at the trash pile and wonders how he can get rid of it. Just then, his attention is grabbed by a door that leads to the basement. He manages to find the key and enters it to measure something. As the evening dawns, Samantha and Hannah return home and they are perplexed as to why their dog is kept outdoors. Curtis doesn't give much of an explanation, stating he prefers it that way. Afterwards, he experiences another distressing nightmare. It's raining and his daughter is looking outside through the window. When he approaches her, he is startled to see a stranger standing outside their house. The whole ground then begins to shake and everything levels as if the house is falling. At this point, he wakes up in his bed and realizes that he has wetted the bed. It's all that damn dream rain. Moments later, Samantha walks into the room to check on him, but he stops her from getting closer, probably due to embarrassment. After cleaning up the bed sheets, he visits a local library along with his daughter, where he goes through some books about mental illness. On their way back, they buy a bunch of canned foods for some reason. As night falls, Curtis cleans the basement and stores the food he brought. When he doesn't return home for a while, his wife peeks through the window and notices light coming from the basement. Overwhelmed by all of these apocalyptic visions and increased insomnia, Curtis finally goes to see a doctor one day. He discloses that he's been having trouble sleeping for four days now. Hearing this, the doctor prescribes him a mild sedative and also refers him to consult a psychiatrist in Columbus. Curtis then goes to the pharmacy to buy the prescribed sedative for his sleeping. On the other hand, Samantha visits the insurance agency to inquire about the funds for their daughter's operation to restore her hearing. Much to her delight, Curtis's company turns out to be a reliable insurance provider that will cover the entire expense for the operation. She then returns home and shares the good news with her husband. This makes Curtis very happy, and it is the first time he has smiled in days. The following morning, he wakes up feeling remarkably well, likely due to the sedative he took the previous night. Even his wife notes his improved appearance. However, his hallucinations persist. He hears thunderous sounds while working even though the sky is clear. This makes him very uneasy, causing him to rush to the trash bin and throw up. 
up. He abruptly leaves the construction site and decides to visit his mother, whom he hasn't seen for a while now. It turns out that his mother, Sarah, has paranoid schizophrenia that surfaced in her about the same age that Curtis is now. Concerned that he may also have this disorder, he asks her if she has disturbing dreams. In response, she says that she experiences hallucinations from unknown people who whisper to her. As days pass by, Curtis's mental health deteriorates more and more as he struggles to distinguish his hallucinations from reality. One day, he comes up with a plan to build a calamity shelter and calculates the money he needs to purchase the equipment. Upon realizing that he can't afford such an amount of money, he visits a bank and takes out a home improvement loan without telling his wife. He also puts his construction job in jeopardy while secretly taking equipment from the company to build his shelter. When he confides this plan in DeWart, the latter is suspicious about his mental well-being, but he eventually agrees to help in any way he can. As soon as Samantha and Hannah leave for the school fair the next day, Curtis summons DeWart with the company Dozer and the two start the construction work in the backyard. In the midst of the digging process, Curtis's wife returns home, who is shocked and understandably upset by all of this. That night, a heated argument ensues between the couple, which further escalates when Samantha learns about the home improvement loan that he took despite being aware of their financial struggles. She demands an explanation for everything, but he leaves, saying that there is nothing to clarify. The stressed Curtis then takes more than the prescribed dose of the sedative. As a result of this, he has a seizure at midnight, which sets Samantha into a panic. She hastily proceeds to call the emergency services, but he blocks her from doing so. After he recovers, he finally talks to his wife, disclosing everything he has been experiencing for the past few months. He claims that it's not just common dreams, but it's feelings. His wife listens to him, but she still can't comprehend what he's saying. The next day, Curtis and Samantha take their child to the hospital in order to schedule her cochlear implant surgery. After going through a brief checkup, the doctor informs them that the surgery will be done in six weeks. In the ensuing days, Curtis becomes increasingly absent from work as he is busy setting up the shelter. When he shows up at work one day, his boss calls him to the office and expresses dissatisfaction with his recent performance. He issues a warning, also ordering him to make up for the time that was squandered. Later that evening, Curtis is visited by his younger brother, Kyle, who has learned about his recent irrational behavior from his wife. He asks about his well-being, to which Curtis claims that he is fine. After a brief cold conversation between the brothers, Curtis asks him to take Red with him as he no longer wants the dog. That night, he has yet another disturbing dream in which he sees his wife standing soaked in the kitchen and staring at him without uttering a word. She also has a knife beside her, which freaks him out. The following day, Curtis's boss visits his house and sees the shelter he made in the backyard. He is also aware of Curtis secretly using the work equipment for his personal work. So, he fires him and gives him only two weeks worth of medical insurance benefits. He further tells Curtis that he has placed DeWart on two weeks unpaid administrative leave for violating the company's rules. When Curtis reveals this news to his wife, she gets so mad that she slaps him for losing his job at such a crucial time. Several days later, seeing that Curtis still loves and cares for Hannah, Samantha can't stay angry any longer. She goes to talk to him and suggests that they cancel their planned beach trip to cover cover their daughter's surgery. She also asks him to find another job as soon as possible, which he agrees to. In the next scene, the family attends a social function at the Lions Club so that they can restore some sense of normalcy to their strained and increasingly isolated life. While enjoying some quality time together, Curtis is confronted by DeWart, who blames him for his job suspension. In a burst of rage, he punches him in front of everyone, which ensues in a physical altercation between the two. Enraged, Curtis knocks DeWart to the floor, overturns a table, and unleashes a frightening verbal tirade upon everyone present. He prophetically shouts that a devastating storm is coming, insisting that none of them are prepared. Samantha is worried to witness such a condition in her husband, but she somehow manages to calm him down before taking him back home. That very midnight, a sudden emergency alarm startles the family, prompting them to rush into their newly built shelter. Curtis carefully puts the anti-toxic masks on his family members and waits 
for the storm to pass. The day after, Samantha wakes up her husband and asks him to open the door, asserting that the storm has subsided. However, Curtis is so obsessed with his theory that he is now scared of going outside. Despite this, she somehow manages to encourage him, finally making him open the door. As they make their way out, they're welcomed by a clear blue sky with no sign of a calamity. They also notice the neighbors cleaning up broken tree limbs and other yard debris as power company trucks restore electricity along the street. In the aftermath of this event, Curtis is overwhelmed with regret for dragging his family to the delusions that he's experiencing. Fueled by this remorse, he finally agrees to seek help from a psychiatrist. During his first session, the psychiatrist tells him that he needs to cut ties from the shelter that he made to avoid further imagination. The doctor also advises the couple to proceed with their planned annual beach vacation. Once they return, Curtis will need to get psychiatric care in a facility away from his family. The scene then cuts to Myrtle Beach, where Curtis is seen building sand castles with Hannah, while Samantha is cooking for them. During their beach time, Hannah signs the word storm, pointing out at a distance. As Samantha steps out of their beach house, a thick, oily rain begins to fall, staining her outstretched hand. Much to her shock, she also witnesses larger storm clouds passing over the ocean. The tornado-like water spouts reach down to the ocean's surface, and the tide pulls back as a tsunami looms in the distance. At this point, she realizes that her husband was right this whole time. The two exchange glances, and the movie ends as they hurry hurriedly rush back to their shelter. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.